Music plays one of the most important roles in movies, as it can do so much to elevate the emotion and excitement of a scene. And to celebrate these talented film composers and their amazing work, I'm going to count down my favorites. I should mention that due to copyright reasons, I won't be playing their scores. However, you've definitely heard a lot of their work in some of your favorite movies and remember them well. Starting with Randy Newman. I know this seems like a surprising choice, as Newman is known primarily as a songwriter of hit songs like I Love LA and Short People. I think he's one of the greatest satirists of all time, but I'm also a huge fan of his movie scores. He's especially good at writing sweeping and sentimental themes, and also has a key understanding of how important music can be to comedy. Most people of my generation will recognize his work for Pixar, and Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Monsters, Inc., and Cars all have wonderful scores, his one for Bug's Life being my personal favorite. With that score, he gave this tale of Anne's fending off grasshoppers such an epic sound. His scores for other animated films, like The Princess and the Frog and James and the Giant Peach, also deserve commending. The Natural has one of the best scores ever written for a sports film, Marriage Story fits the complicated lives of two divorced parents, and Leatherheads blends well with that film's classic screwball comedy feel. And I think Meet the Parents has a very underrated score, capturing the awkwardness and nerves Greg Fokker deals with during the movie. Randy Newman has such a beautiful way of understanding the characters on the screen and giving them the right melodies, and I'm always happy to hear his music in a film. Bernard Herrmann if Herman had only composed music for Alfred Hitchcock, he would still merit inclusion on this list. However, his work spanning over his entire career shows his remarkable abilities. The first movie he was the composer on? Citizen Kane. Right from the opening scenes overlooking Charles Foster Kane's home of Xanadu, he showed a skill at getting under our skin with an orchestra. And the rest of Citizen Kane's score is top quality, too. The Day the Earth Stood Still is one of the most iconic scores ever written for a science fiction film, Jason the Argonauts captures the unknown lurking in this Greek adventure, and Taxi Driver fits well with Travis Bickle's outlook of New York City. Plus you have Cape Fear, with a theme that encompasses the revenge-filled mindset of criminal Max Cady. Some of his most famous work comes via his collaborations with Hitchcock. For a time, most people couldn't step into the shower without thinking of his violins from Psycho, and Vertigo has an appropriately dizzying quality to it. Herman knew how to bring forth the right mood to excite and scare his audience. Michael Giacchino even though he hasn't been composing films as long as the other entries on this list, Giacchino has successfully put out one brilliant score after another. One of his first major breakout scores was The Incredibles, which remains one of my favorite superhero themes. Since then, he's managed to show his understanding for producing the right level of emotion, and his compositions also deliver in action sequences. He brought us the sweet melodies of Up and the exciting thrills of Star Trek in the same year. His music celebrated how anyone can cook in Ratatouille, the importance of childhood wonder in Super 8, and the optimistic possibilities of the future in Tomorrowland. His score for John Carter brought a beauty to this classic pulp adventure. He brought a bounciness as well as a sadness that accompanied thoughts of a young girl in Inside Out. And his work on the Planet of the Apes prequels were the right match for these hyper-intelligent primates overtaking the planet. He is also the latest composer to give a theme to Spider-Man. When Michael Giacchino takes on a legacy franchise, he even finds a way to work in themes from earlier films and television shows. Batman will be his next superhero, and I'm certainly looking forward to what that score and his other future work sounds like. Joe Hisaishi. Some of the most beautiful scores I've heard in Japanese animated films come courtesy of this composer. Always collaborating with Hayao Miyazaki, his compositions are a perfect match for the imagined worlds featured in his films. Spirited Away features my favorite score of his, as it fits with Jihiro's character development and the incredible sight she witnesses. Howl's Moving Castle is another one I love, while My Neighbor Todoro, Kiki's Delivery Service, Ponyo, and Castle in the Sky also delight. The Wind Rises similarly works, especially when launching into the airplane fantasies of the main character. He's impressed outside of animation, too. I highly recommend giving a score from the Japanese film Fireworks a listen. With Miyazaki coming out of retirement again, one of the things I'm most excited about is hearing Joe Hisaishi's contribution to his next film. Max Steiner when I think of many of the most memorable classic movie themes, Steiner is definitely responsible for a good amount of them. Maybe his most iconic is Gone with the Wind, with the right amount of awe, romance, and epicness. Whether he was scoring to Scarlett O'Hara's Privileged Life, or her at the bottom of the ladder, or her flawed romance with Rhett Butler, his themes matched what the character was going through. He also composed the score for Casablanca, another beloved classic. And when it comes to adventure themes, his work on King Kong ranks high up there. He could jump between genres of ease, whether it was a war picture like Sergeant York, or western like The Searchers. And are you familiar with the theme from A Summer Place? Most likely, even if you've never watched or heard of A Summer Place. Max Steiner composed that too. It's a little surprise why he was one of the most in-demand film composers during Hollywood's golden age. Jerry Goldsmith. 
From horror to science fiction to war film, Goldsmith has brought all kinds of sounds to a variety of movies, and many of them hit the needed punch. He created the perfect theme to represent the Antichrist in The Omen. His theme for Star Trek, the motion picture, was so epic it was later used in the intro of the Star Trek The Next Generation television series. His pieces for Plan the Apes brought a unique sound befitting the unusual world our astronauts dropped into, while Patton had a military tone that matched the general at its center. Goldsmith created Rambo's theme, and he composed an inspiring score for Rudy that I'm surprised isn't played at every sports game to build everyone up. He even worked on a few animated films, providing memorable music for The Secret of Nim and Mulan. His most fruitful collaborator was Joe Dante, whose films allowed Goldsmith to indulge in his inner Carl Stalin. Gremlins is my favorite Goldsmith score, with the appropriate wackiness for these mischievous creatures. His theme for Gizmo is lovely too, and his final score for Looney Tunes Back in Action would have been right home in the classic cartoons. Jerry Goldsmith was a composer always willing to experiment and choose the right sound, whether for creepy horror film or bonkers comedy. Danny Elfman If you're looking for a composer to provide a sense of whimsy and even some mystery in your film, Elfman is definitely someone who can accomplish that. His most famous work has been with Tim Burton, and it's easy to see why he felt the founder of Oingo Bongo would be the right person to enhance his wild ideas. Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Beetlejuice, Edward Scissorhands, Big Fish, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Corpse Bride, Alice in Wonderland, and Frank Weenie all feature stirring scores with the right amount of quirkiness and beauty. Although my favorite of their collaborations come courtesy of the Batman films. He composed an iconic theme for The Dark Knight, and then brought an even more operatic sound to Gotham City in the sequel. And need I mention his work on The Nightmare Before Christmas, which remain hummable parts of the Halloween and Christmas seasons to this day. His work with other filmmakers is also impressive, whether in comic book movies like Dick Tracy, Men in Black, and Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, or family pictures such as Charlotte's Web, Blue Sky's Epic, and Illumination's adaptation of The Grinch. He's even provided scores for Gus Van Sant movies like To Die For and Good Will Hunting. Oh, and I guess I should mention he happened to write the theme music for a little show called The Simpsons. You may have heard of it. Danny Elfman is a composer who has built a familiar sound of his music that I'm always happy to hear. Alan Silvestri one of those composers who brings a joyfulness to so many of his scores, Silvestri knows exactly how to get the audience pumped up for what's on the screen. He's worked the most with Robert Zemeckis, for whom he has composed his most memorable music. My favorite is Back to the Future, with its exhilarating theme for that time-traveling DeLorean, as well as Marty, Doc Brown, and George McFly's themes. He took this fun comedy and gave it a larger-than-life score, and the film would not have been the same without it. He then expanded on them for the sequels. I especially like the Western motifs in Part 3. Some of my other favorite Silvestri scores on some films are the cartoony mayhem of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the sweet melodies of Forrest Gump, and the Christmassy delights of The Polar Express. He's done exceptional work for other directors, too. Mouse Hunt has a fast-paced energy befitting the Tom and Jerry-inspired antics of its characters. Stuart Little has a cheerful and heartwarming feeling all too appropriate for that charming mouse. Lilo and Stitch found the perfect blend as he composed some fun space action pieces, along with more sentimental music, showing the troubles that befall Lilo and Nani and the growing bond of that destructive alien. The Crude set some fantastic themes for its caveman family and their road trip through a colorful world, and Ready Player One captured the excitement of the virtual reality occupied by those pop culture savvy treasure hunters. I also want to shout out Sylvester's contributions to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He entered that comic book universe with a bang thanks to his march for Captain America, and then composed a winning theme for the entire Avengers team. His music for Endgame has plenty of my favorite pieces in the MCU, with Portals being a highlight. Whether sentimental or thrilling, Alan Spestri knows how to give every film he composes that extra sweet spot. Ennio Morricone When thinking of the best of Italian cinema, Morricone's music immediately enters the conversation. He has been responsible for so many beautiful pieces of music, along with some awesome ones for westerns. The one I keep coming back to is Cinema Paradiso. The music in that movie touches the heart every time, as we see a young boy's adoration for the movies and the love of his life blossom. And then there's the final montage, which is absolutely magical as Morricone's music is played over scenes of forbidden kisses. I mentioned he composed for westerns, and the best of those is definitely the good, the bad, and the ugly. It captures the heat and ferocity of the desert, and there's a reason it's often imitated when depicting cowboys standing off at high noon. His other work for Sergio Leone, like One Spot Time in America, have also earned their place in film music history. His scores for Hollywood productions were also brilliant. Surprisingly, his music and John Carpenter's The Things looked down upon on original release, but is now a lot more deservingly revered. The mission theme is so good you would believe that Jesuit priests would be playing it in South America in the 1700s. Meanwhile, The Untouchables fits the cops versus robbers theme of the movie, and the hateful aid worked well with the untrusting morals of the main characters. And new Morricone has certainly earned his place as one of the maestros of cinema. Before I reveal my number one pick, I do have a lot of honorable mentions. There are so many excellent film composers, and I felt bad leaving any of these off, so I wanted to give them a mention. Are you ready? 
My honorable mentions are Thomas Newman, Hans Zimmer, Henry Mancini, James Horner, Nino Rota, John Powell, Alexander Pla, Howard Shore, Alan Menken, Mark Shaman, James Noon Howard, David Newman, Bruce Brown, Patrick Doyle, John Barry, Maurice Jarre, Wendy Carlos, Elma Bernstein, and Charlie Chaplin. And now my number one favorite movie composer is John Williams. When it comes to film music, it's remarkable how many iconic and beloved themes Williams has composed in his many decades in the film industry. In fact, it was listening to Williams' work that made me appreciate and fall in love with film scores. When looking over his amazing filmography, I do think Star Wars stands at the top. He took George Lucas' space adventure and owed to his childhood serials and gave the galaxy that extra oomph that cemented as a classic. And he continued to build on that music in these subsequent episodes, creating even more lasting pieces. Then you have the multiple unforgettable themes John Williams has provided for Steven Spielberg. He made a couple of notes terrifying in Jaws, and made a soar with E.T. the Extraterrestrial. His music played a key role in communicating with the aliens in Close Encounters of a Third Kind, and carried an emotional weight in Schindler's List. He brought his sense of adventure and wonderment to the Indiana Jones series, and successfully slipped between awe-inspiring and ferocious in Jurassic Park. From the magic of Neverland in Hook, to the military marches of 1941, to the jazzy tunes of Catch Me If You Can, to the patriotic remembrance of Saving Private Ryan, Williams and Spielberg have worked so well in sync on pretty much every movie they've collaborated on together. Beyond Spielberg, he gave The Man of Steel a triumph theme in Superman the Movie. He helped transport us to Hogwarts with his compositions for the Harry Potter films. He even took on the assignment of a Christmas comedy about a boy stuck home alone and treated it with the necessary respect, and deserves more credit for helping to make it a holiday favorite for many. He had a hand in some of the popular disaster pictures of the 70s, with the Poseidon Adventure especially standing out. And one of my favorite underrated scores by John Williams is The Witches of Eastwick, a theme that matched the devilish charm of Jack Nicholson's strange billionaire suddenly arrived in town. I often find myself listening to many of the work of these film composers I mentioned, but it's John Williams who I wind up coming back to the most. I sincerely believe that several centuries into the future, his music will be talked about in the same breath as Mozart and Beethoven and the other classical composers. Now let me know in the comments who your favorite film composers are and which is your favorite score of theirs, and I'll see you next time.